All right, Vanessa, let's take a look at your paper, Emily Format first. This is good. All of this is good. The Raw Death of Duncan. Um, that should be interesting. Uh, catchy, at least. All right, so you start off with a quote, um, which these quotes right here, um, it's, not a, it's not actually a double quote to start here. Um, so you have this quote, which I think is a good way to start, talking about extreme trauma. You got a little bit of, uh, oh, you got two. See, there's a, you can just use a double quote, Vanessa. These are all single quotes that you have in here. Um, this is probably going to be in quotes uh, at the end. We'll talk about that in class. Man, you have huge spaces in between there. Why are there such huge spaces in between your words? All right, so um, as you look at this text, I finally figured it out, Vanessa. I'll help you out here, kiddo. This is in center justify. You want to left justify. I just couldn't figure out because I looked at your next paragraph and it was fine. But okay, we got that figured out. All right. So you start with a quote, which is good. You jump right into the play right after that. I want you to elaborate on this quote right after right after you say it. Talk a little bit about it. What does it mean, etc. Then jump into the play. During the play Macbeth by William Shakespeare, comma. A character, no comma, no comma, is going through an uneasy time in his life. Um, many signs of an illness. Okay, you haven't even mentioned the illness yet, um, so you need to mention that uh, because you have to introduce the symptoms eventually. But you don't actually talk about any of the symptoms in the introduction, which is your body paragraphs, which you have to introduce that concept in your introduction. So I need to see the symptoms here. Um, he has symptoms he can't handle. Then right after that, list the symptoms that he can't handle. Okay. Um, no comma here. The process of Macbeth wanting to murder Duncan, sh no comma, shows him without a mentality of his own. He cannot succeed in the right path. So here's a run-on sentence. You have more than one sentence written as one. So you need to fix that overall. Um, I still think it needs to be a little bit more specific with your thesis. I'm not exactly sure you're at the point of a message here yet. I'm not sure how you would you know, fit this in. So we really need to make sure that we list the symptoms here. We really need to make sure that we're expanding on this quote. Um, so make sure that you do that. Uh, once you get into the body. So the problem with your first body paragraph um, is I don't know what the symptom is for a long time. Uh, you use quotes, which is good. Again, going back to the quotes, you cite them correctly, which is good. Uh, you have a sentence fragment here. Uh, so this is the first hint that I'm like, oh, I guess this is about being agitated. So you, make, you tell, talk about how Macbeth's wife makes fun of him, questions his manhood. Then you jump right into agitation. Well, I can think of a lot better examples in the play where Macbeth is agitated. Um, he's agitated quite often rather than calm during the planning of murder, which has also changed his way of nature. You want to be more specific with that. And again, you're going back to his wife. How does that have to do with agitation? Um, because just because she's not the best influence. Uh, no comma here. Remember, comma conjunction only when you have two complete sentences on either side. Uh, he made it change from a thorough guy to an obscure guy with his behavioral being a strange matter of mysteriousness without him thinking thoroughly. Um, is this... I guess I'll wait until I read your next paragraph, but remember you need a, uh, a transition statement to go from here to here. So in this body paragraph, Vanessa, we need to know a better topic sentence so we know where we're going with the symptom. I need to see some outside sources from this symptom. I need to make sure all of the citations from the play and examples from the play are direct links to the symptom. Um, and then you need to elaborate on the significance of him having this symptom. Um, that's a lot to do in that paragraph, but you need to get it done. All right, so this next paragraph, if this is your topic sentence, has to do with psychological symptoms. Um, so now not only feeling of agitation from behavior, so this is worded wrong, he's facing psychological. These next symptoms include flashback fear, anxiety before and after he murdered Duncan, and anxiety before, so this is an item sense. Okay, so no colon here. They include these things, okay? 
Um, okay. So he's more feeling anxious than ever. So it, it looks like you're doing like three different symptoms all in this paragraph, which means you're not taking enough time to really elaborate on any one. So he's feeling anxious. Um, there's your raw decision to kill Duncan. Uh, there's a comma misplaced. Uh, I would highlight this. The idea that it's a terrible feat. Uh, I think that's a, a really good indication of where his mind is. Um, so we have anxiousness, uh, which you had agitation up here. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you really need to go through that. Um, you have uh, fear. You have a sentence fragment here. And then you have this hallucination. And then you have fear again, which we've used fear. And you say fear is this third symptom. Well, I don't even know what the first two are, Vanessa. You've really got to be clear with your topic sentence. Now, I think you're trying to lump psychological symptoms all into one, and I don't know if it's working. I really think you need to break it apart a little bit. Um, someone may or may not have seen Macbeth suspiciously end Duncan's life, but we know the guards woke up, though. Um, so you, you can't necessarily say that. Um... But who knows if his mentality was with him. I think you can elaborate on that a little bit more. One thing that I do really like about your paper, Vanessa, is I like the chronological order of it. Like, every, every, the next step after Duncan gets murdered is another new symptom that pops up. I really like that concept. I wish it was tied together a little bit better. Uh, you have some space issues here. A couple of spaces there. Um, so he feels miserable the whole situation. Uh, he'll eat in fear and at night. Uh, this is a run-on sentence here. Okay, so uh, this is a really good quote. Now, it's from Act 3, so it doesn't matter to you that that jumps way ahead to prove your point um, overall. I'm not sure. Um, it's okay with me, but if you're really going for the moment stuff, then I think it I don't know if it works that well. And again, is this paragraph really about terrible nightmares? Um, he'd rather be dead than alive. No comma instead of living through his nightmares. Uh, because you're jumping right back into Act 1, put on a happy face for... I'm sorry, Act 2, put on a happy face for his guests. Uh, nowhere to be stopped by himself, leaving his brain somewhere in a constant battle. Um, nowhere to be stopped by himself. What does that mean? You might want to be more specific with that. Uh, so leaving his brain somewhere in a constant battle with whom, with what, why, uh, just elaborate more. All right, so emotional detachment is your last paragraph. And again, I don't. Ha I want to see an outside source that tells me exactly what emotional detachment is, or at least what you want to define it as. So I'd love to see this outside source of that. All right, so you don't really need to say that since I know it's your last body paragraph. And had you had a really strong introduction where you listed the symptoms, the reader would also know that this is your last body paragraph. Um, so you have a couple of things in here. You got a comma there. You got the conjunction. You have two complete sentences. You got the comma there. Um, and I don't know what this means. He knows himself as a nobody from all of the murderous events he commits throughout the play. I have no idea what that means, to know himself as a nobody. Um, he feels emotional detachment from his true feelings. Um, so I can buy into this if you backed it up a little bit more. Uh, he, assume, he is not healthy. What do you mean? Prove that. Um, there's a quote in here that would back that up. Prove this. Um, you go on to talk to Lady Macbeth, which is fine. But again, how does this show emotional detachment then? Um, be specific. And again, if you had an outside source, I could see that that's how it tied in. At the end of the play, comma, um, he, she loses herself just as Macbeth did. I mean, should we put that in quotes? Loses herself because she commits suicide. So, so Lady Macbeth, comma, sleepwalking and depressed, comma, gets sick. Um, you have a super long quote with, again, the wrong double quote here so you have a super long quote because it goes on to a fourth line it needs to be separated so what you actually do is hit enter and tab over twice so that's what it should look like um, she dies by killing herself no comma 
both their outlooks went out the door. Well, I guess if you're dead, it does kind of go out the door. Um, is there a better way to say that? Uh, both leaving them killed in a wrong state of being, I bet you could say it a little bit better than that. All right, so transition, start with repeating the thesis statement, which you don't really do here. Um, then you talk a little bit about the main points. He displays feelings of fear. Fear led to guilt and unhealthiness while emotional attachment made him forget his life. So you do kind of go through all of them. Make sure that each body paragraph gets its own sentence of summary. Uh, it, so it's absolutely clear it changed him. No comma from the start of planning Duncan's murder to the end of it. Um, so read the sentence. Over the countless times he dealt with the variety of his symptoms within himself into the darkened path. That not sure that really makes sense, so I'd want to look at that as a possible rewrite. Never, ever, 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 Vanessa cites Spark Notes. To me, this is just a you yelling at me that you cheated. Did you cite all of these sources? So you didn't cite them because they're not in you. The only thing that's in there is the play, which you're not even you don't even have in here. So. Um, you obviously need a lot of work here on your works cited page. You got to cite within the text, okay? Whenever you use information that's not your own, give me a citation for it. All right, Vanessa, you got a lot of work to do. Good luck on the rewrite.